Welcome, everybody, to this Microsoft 365 demo feature show, whatever we call the show, doesn't really matter. And uh, this time we're going to talk about, again, some really cool agendic and co-pilot related capabilities. And uh, my name is Cesar Yuvonen. I'm a principal product manager uh, in a Microsoft 365 community and com uh, SharePoint and all of those areas, many, many topics. But with me, the real star is Judith. Uh, Judith, can you do a quick intro? Uh, who are you and what is your background? Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, Visa. My name is Judith Jacobi, and I'm also a principal PM on the SharePoint Experiences team. And my team is working on Knowledge Agent, for which I want to show you a couple of features today. Yes. So we mentioned the Knowledge Agent. Somebody might have actually seen the blog post, which is, by the way, in the video notes, if, if, if uh, people are watching this and mm -hmm. haven't seen the announcement of this really cool Knowledge Agent. Can you do a quick intro? Uh, what is a Knowledge Agent? What does it actually provide? Yeah, so about the knowledge agent. Um, you know that AI-ready content starts really with SharePoint, and knowledge agent is a strategic enabler that transforms how organizations prepare, manage, and scale their content for trustworthy AI experiences. Now, before you ask me what it really does, let me explain. There's actually three things. So first, it helps to automatically enrich and structure SharePoint content ensuring that Copilot and other agents deliver accurate, relevant, and compliant responses. This means really that metadata is applied intelligently, document types, review dates, policy status, everything that people worry about, and this is without manual tagging. And then second, it drives business processes at scale, so structured knowledge, full search powers, and enables autonomous workflows. Now, whether it's surfacing the right document or triggering a workflow, the agent makes this seamless. And then what I'm really going to talk about today is really the third one, keeping your intranet fresh and engaging. The agent really provides monitors, uh, pro proactively monitors content quality, flags, inactive pages, and suggests improvements. It really ensures that your digital workplace remains a reliable source of truth. And kind of in short, the knowledge agent is your intelligent content creator. It's working behind the scenes for you to make SharePoint smarter, cleaner, and more valuable for every user and every AI interaction. Absolutely. Now, now, and and why is it super important for SharePoint? Well, because SharePoint is the location where the, all of the content remains, and that's where the AI and agents are actually drawing the information uh, for the end users. So it's really important that the tacking and automation and metadata and everything else is properly done. And again, that's where Knowledge Agent is here to help. Now, today we're going to talk about uh, specifically. I think it, we're going to focus on site level. I'm going to do a live demo on that, right, Judith? Exactly, yes. We definitely look at the how we improve your site today. Let's jump on the live demo and then you can walk us through uh, what does it actually do and, and all of the different capabilities, what we have there. So let me slip, uh, or switch to mode and to the live demo mode and we can see it in practice. Absolutely. So this is really about showing you how a knowledge agent helps you keep your SharePoint sites fresh, accurate and easy to navigate. So it's really, and as you said before, Visa, like it's, you know, there's so much content and how do we keep this uh, content structured and how we get with this content that kind of grows and grows and expands? How can we make sure that search and copilot and agent finds the most important information for us, right? So this is, um, let me actually um, go over here. You see already the screen right now. Yeah. Now, let me first show you how to engage with knowledge agent. Um, see. So you see down here, you see here right now, open knowledge agent. This is the floating button. And you see here, it kind of activates and pro uh, provides quick access to knowledge agent AI features. And it's not just really a UI element. It's the strategic anchor for intelligent assistance across SharePoint. So the, uh, as I just said here, it offers context aware suggestions based on your content, your role, and your behavior. So, not everyone sees all the information, the same information here, right? So, it really depends if you're a site manager, a content creator, or a consumer. The floating button tailors its skills to what you need when you need it. And this is always your gateway to the agent ecosystem here. And you can see here that there's various options to summarize this page, ask a question, create a page. And what we're going to deep dive in here today is uh, the improve this site that we are on. 
Makes sense. Now, now, what does to improve the site actually means in practice? What are the capabilities behind all that? So with the improved the site action, I can now start what is not only a cleanup, but a proactive content creation, really. I want to make sure that everyone on my team finds complete, accurate information when using Copilot or SharePoint. It's really a win for productivity, trust, and the user experience in general here. So when I click on this here, you see right now the agent's capabilities on this uh, specific improving the site capability here. It's page retirement, content gap detection, and link fixes, which can transform site management from reactive to strategic. Now, I want to make sure that this is now future proof for everyone, right? So should I just deep dive in there, or do you have any questions here, Lisa? No, I, I think let's actually deep dive through those individual uh, features because I think it's it's key important to understand uh, what what is available and how do we control and optimize the site experience. Yeah, absolutely. Let's first look at the inactive pages capability here. Retire inactive pages here. The agent now spots two uh, inactive pages that I have here, and there is different options that I have, right? What we understand to be most desired from site owners is to deprioritize pages that have not been updated or visited from in a while, right? And they want to have this deprioritized in search copilot and agents here. We call this retired because, again, we want to have only the highest quality and most relevant content highlighted so search can find content and agents reason over the most important part only. Now, uh, what I have here is here, there is now two pages here that um, kind of are, you know, it's it's a demo tenant, tenant visa, uh, visa, you know that, right? So it hasn't been used since an hour, right? Usually you, we see pages that have been retired or, or kind of have been outdated for, for many, long. many, many days. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, um, months or years even. So let's face it, there are pages which haven't been touched for years. And and again, coming back on this functionality, I'm going to ask a few questions on it in a second. But but it's important to deprioritize right the pages uh, from the copilot so that the old content, which again is not relevant anymore to be shown when people are searching, for example, the latest in, uh, HR capabilities or recommendations or benefits, um, we have some outdated data. We don't want that to get actually surfaced in copilot. Uh, exactly. And that's what this is, deprioritizing a page right absolutely yes and so i have here two pages here right now the leadership in 2018 well this is a while ago right i can uh then view this page i can look at this one just to see what this looks like here and see like yeah this is really an outdated page here i really don't need this anymore right and from here i have various options once i have seen this right now i can say like okay i want to snooze i want somebody else look at this page and kind of you know have a look at this one first if i'm not the content owner i can dismiss it i can never show this again because i want to keep this page or the most important actions is here is like i can retire it or i can delete it in this case i want to retire it because uh, maybe somebody is interested but it should definitely should be deprioritized right yep. and so once i click here on retire you see what's happening here the page is going to be retired and now there's a banner that appears up here it says this page is not being maintained so because this means really this page is deprioritized in search and for copilot and in agents but it's still available so if somebody has a direct url we don't want to break the experience right people can get to this page in this case, and um, but they will see this banner that says the page is not being maintained, the content may be out of date, right? Makes, makes perfect sense. So now, now, what if somebody wants to actually get the page back? Uh, there's probably a functionality on that, so or they want yeah. to do a small update on that. Absolutely, yeah, it's actually easy. You can uh, view all retired pages here. When it says here, show retired pages, it opens this it shows you all the retired pages that you have and you can go into details yeah. and just uh, reactivate this here as well now Excellent. um also kind of very similar to this one you probably see this flush up here as well we talked about like how old pages are right and we also know that um different sites have different requirements right so some pages uh, some sites do not want to have any content that is older than six months others say like well actually i kind of you know older than you know, two years or, you know, one year is okay for us. So we actually allow um, the user to change this as well here. So you can change and say like, which suggestions do you want to see um, when you open the site manager for you? Makes, makes sense. Now let's move on that list. Uh, so what about content gaps? What, what does that actually mean? What is a content gap and how does that work? 
And uh, yeah, great question. So what we see is that users very often search for specific information on a site, but can't find it, right? And so we are really here to point out such content gaps in the site. Uh, so site collection admins, they can actually start adding such content or at least be informed about this, right? So this is here, find content gaps. And what you can see here, uh, there's a couple of things that uh, users search for, but can't find on this site, right? So a couple of things here that I want to show you, because um, there's various users that might use uh, a search for the same thing, but to use different terms. So we show here the exact terms the users type in the search box, but um, we don't show you kind of one card for each of because we just cluster this together for you, right? We say like, hey, people are searching for Sava Core fiber customer case studies, right? And can't find this. And how often they searched for this one in the last 12 months, right? From here, you have a couple of options, um, or do you have a question already? No, I'm just thinking, of, okay, so now that we know that we have a gap, which is actually really smart, so it's proactively explaining that people are searching these things so that the content editor can address that again proactively, being the helper behind the scenes. What can I do then? What is, what is yeah. the next step? If you know already exactly what you want to do, you can go ahead and add a new section to a page or create a new page with AI. So these are the manual actions that we have here. But very often, at least that's what we have seen when we talk to customers, was like people say, like, why do people search for this? And what is the experience what they have in the search for that? So we use AI to actually um, in investigate this for you and tell you what happens. And so once we kind of uh, run the search and see can tell you what we have found. So it actually says none of the top results contain actual customer case studies. Doesn't exist on this side at all, right? But people look yep. for it. And then there's a recommended action. The recommended action is create a dedicated page for Sava Core Fiber customer case studies. And you can just go ahead then click create a page. We pre-fill with the information that we have already that prompt for you. And then with AI, you can just then create this uh, this page for you. Yep. Now, this is one option that you have here, kind of uh, very often, uh, just I think this is the Sutherland's price. Um, you know, people search for pricing as well. And um, when we actually look at this one here, it says like, yes, there is kind of some information about Sutherland's, but it doesn't include any pricing information, right? And so the recommended action is really to enhance the Sutherland's pitch page with clear pricing information, right? And then you can go ahead and uh, create a section. It opens the page for you. Uh, the recommended page and then just you can add a, a section with yep. the related information on that. Yep, makes perfect sense. Really, really cool that it's again, the proactiveness is the key here. So it's helping the content editors make sure that the content is fresh and up to date. Now we do have a, one more capability there. So to fix broken links, that's a self-descriptive title. <laughs> can you walk through the, the process of that? Absolutely. How often have you heard that customers encounter a broken link on your site or somebody sends an email and has a typo in there on the link that they're sending and then it gets to your site and uh, people don't uh, find this information, right? So this is really the problem here. Now the agent alerts you if visitors encounter four or four errors on your site when they try to access pages that they don't exist. And a um, couple of things here as well. So there's a couple of broken links on here as well. Um, there's a misspelling on the Compre history um, in 2018. So there's an option that you can either uh, redirect this manually or the, um, the tool also makes a suggestion. And really interesting is also suggested links here. On this one, they couldn't find any uh, related uh, re related or rele relevant destination yes. to suggest, right? And it's honest about this. It doesn't make anything up. It just tells you like, well, um, we don't know anything, but you can go browse and kind of see on your site which page you want to um, kind of connect to this one. And it just yep. opens the picker. And then you can either uh, type in a link or you can select um, which um, page you want to have this redirect there. And it creates the redirect. Makes perfect sense. That's actually really cool. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the three new capabilities specifically on the site improvements. Uh, what about overall knowledge agents? So, uh, you did a quick intro on, on kind of a focusing on that. Anything else what we want to kind of mention here as a, we're not going to deep dive on all of the capabilities, yeah. um, but what else uh, should be, people should be looking for in the knowledge yeah. agent? I, I don't think we have time for much more today, but I, I think there will be more videos coming on Knowledge Agent for, for sure, because today we only did a deep dive into the skills that are most important to keep your sites fresh and compliant. 
but there is multiple additional functionalities within Knowledge Agent. Now, again, I said already for the different um, user types, like for content managers, it powers automated workflows and views using natural language. And for example, you can just say, create a view of all the policies expiring this quarter and the agent delivers this, right? Or for content creators, it enables effortless page creation. You saw this already from beautiful news posts to dynamic sections and even FAQ kind of web parts, right? You can describe what you want and the agent builds it for you. And then for content consumers, it provides knowledge on demand, context aware, scoped to what they need, when they need it and how they prefer to engage. It really isn't just the toolkits. It's kind of this role of their intelligence layer that ad adapts to your needs and drives business processes at scale. Yeah, that's a, that is a really nicely implemented also. I'm just putting the screen sharing away, but it's really nicely implemented as a floating thing. It's And it's following you across the sites and everything. So, um, and obviously, like you said, Judith, we, we don't have a time to show all of the capabilities, uh, but as you transition between the sites, depending on where you are, Knowledge Agent is giving you different skills, which is a really, really cool capability. So it's, it's showing you that really the intelligence on top of the site and make you as the content owner and the site owner more efficient. Yeah, which is yeah. awesome. Yeah, of course. And I really hope that everyone that sees this video gives this experience a try to improve your sites. And we are really excited to hear feedback about this as we're improving and developing. Absolutely, absolutely. And so please add comments, questions, everything uh, on the video. Please let us know. We're building all of these capabilities uh, for the end users. And I can't wait to actually get more videos done on the knowledge agent and all of this AI goodness, what we're rolling out uh, pretty soon. But thank you, Judy, for uh, joining on the show. And thank you, really great demo on the site improvement capabilities. Thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it.